Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the MacDonald triad? So the MacDonald triad is also referred to as the homicidal triad. And it's based on research that took place in the early 60s by a researcher named MacDonald. And it looks at three specific factors that he believed were linked to violence in adulthood. So these were three factors that would occur in childhood that he believed led to violent behavior later on. The three factors are engaging in arson, torturing small animals, and bedwetting. Now, when he refers to bedwetting, he's talking about bedwetting after the age of five. So research was conducted after this research, which supported that this MacDonald triad tended to predict violent behavior. There was an association there. Then research was conducted after that that showed little or no association between the MacDonald triad and violent behavior. So does the MacDonald triad predict violent behavior? Well, it doesn't appear to in many cases, but one of the problems here is that we're looking at a low probability event. Violent behavior, even though it seems common, like it's featured on a lot of television shows and in movies, it's not really that common when you compare it to how many people there are in the general public. So you're talking about relatively common behaviors, particularly bedwetting, trying to associate a behavior like that with a low probability behavior is difficult. Now, we do know that arson and torturing small animals, those two factors are associated with child abuse. Bedwetting after the age of five has a moderate association with child abuse. So not everyone who is abused as a child will engage in those behaviors but it's more likely that they will if they're abused than if they weren't abused. So what do we know about the link between child abuse and violent behavior? Well, the risk of violent behavior does increase if someone's abused as a child. So there is a link between violent behavior as an adult and child abuse. So the McDonald triad might not predict violent behavior in the mechanism that a lot of people think it does, like the one we see in the movies and TV when they talk about serial killers or other violent people and look at these risk factors. It may predict it through another causal chain, which is child abuse may lead to those behaviors and child abuse is linked with an increased risk of engaging in violent behavior. So in a sense, it's reasonable to say that the McDonald triad is linked to violent behavior in some way. They both share child abuse in common, the MacDonald triad and violent behavior as an adult. But is there a direct link? There doesn't appear to be. Both appear to be the symptom of something else. Now, it's also important to note that with the MacDonald triad, one of the keys to that research was that those three events had to appear together. And what we know now about these events is they're really independent of one another. So if someone exhibits one of those behaviors, particularly arson, or the torturing small animals, that could indicate a problem. The bedwetting, that has a lot of different other causes other than child abuse. That could be a cause. We know that is linked, but there are many other causes that could contribute to bedwetting after five. So really, the MacDonald triad doesn't appear to have validity in terms of the three factors being held together, but rather each factor independently seems to be connected with child abuse and because child abuse is connected with violent behavior, we have that connection between those factors and violent behavior. So the three factors held together, that might not really predict anything. That might not be any more problematic than any three factors or any number of factors that come together that all indicate some sort of problem exists. So what I'm saying is that there's nothing necessarily special about those three factors when they're all present at the same time. They're independent factors and each of them is a cause for some concern. So why did the McDonald triad become so popular? Well, as I mentioned before, there seems to be a lot of information about the McDonald triad and a lot of interest in violent criminality featured on television and in the movies. Now, these serious offenses, of course, are a problem for society. But again, as I mentioned before, they're not really that frequent. There's a fascination with them, and I think that's what's caused the McDonald triad and other theories about what leads to sociopathy and psychopathy, for example, in becoming so popular. 
these concepts have probably become popular mostly because of an interest that's disproportionate with how common the violent events are. A specific interest that has probably fueled some of what we see in the media and is fueled by what's featured in the media. I hope you found this description of the MacDonald triad to be interesting. Thanks for watching.